Have you ever wanted to make a video game but had no idea where to start? The team over at Unity has been hard at work building a starting point for all of us to learn different aspects of game development. The best part is that this new project incorporates something we all know and love, Legos. Today we are going to download and install Unity and the new Lego micro game. Together we will walk through the tutorial helping you take some of your first steps into game development. Welcome to iHeart Game Dev, my channel all about game development. This is the first video in a new mini series dedicated to beginners. Before we get going, I do need to mention that this video is sponsored by Unity. Now, let's get you started on your game development journey. Let's begin today by downloading the necessary tools for development with Unity. Googling Unity Hub or using the provided link in the description, we'll find ourselves on Unity's website where we can download Unity Hub. Unity Hub is an easy to use version manager. Why would we need multiple versions of Unity? Well, engineers are constantly working to improve the Unity engine and experience, so they release new versions with updates. But we may like certain features of older versions, and Unity Hub allows us to keep the old versions. Once we have Unity Hub downloaded and installed, we can open the application. Here we see a menu with four options on the left hand side. Projects, Learn, Community, and Installs. Pressing on the Learn tab, we will be presented with a list of sample projects available to download. It's here that we'll find the LEGO Micro Game. Let's select the LEGO Micro Game and press Download Project on the bottom. We'll notice in the description that the stated editor version is 2019.4. If we do not have this version already installed, Unity Hub will explain that we need to download this version. Let's be sure to select the WebGL Build Support checkbox so that we can publish our game online. And then we'll begin to download Unity. As the download begins, we'll see in our Installs tab that 2019.4 has been added. This is the version of Unity that the LEGO Micro game was originally designed to be used with. When the download is complete, we can go ahead and open the project and Unity. Welcome to Game Development with Unity. The first time we open the LEGO Micro Game, we are presented with the option to load tutorials or load the playground scene. Let's go through the tutorials and further elaborate on concepts explored in each one. Having a solid understanding of how to interact and use Unity will be the perfect foundation to build off of as newer game developers. So let's enter the first tutorial. Immediately, we'll notice the highlighted blue area. Anything highlighted in blue is what we need to pay attention to for each step of the tutorial. Additionally, we will see that this window is titled Tutorials, a window that is exclusive to the LEGO Micro game. For each step, be sure to read the full description before moving on to the next. Now let's press start and begin. The first step of this first tutorial has us entering play mode. Play mode is Unity's way for us to test the progress of our current game. In addition to automatically switching to the game window, displaying a viewpoint from the camera within the game scene, program scripts will also be executed if they are attached to any of the objects within the active game scene. For instance, there is a script attached to this LEGO character that allows us to use WASD to move around. Pressing the play button for a second time will exit play mode and return us to the scene view. This leads us to the next step in the tutorial which highlights the hierarchy window. The hierarchy is where we will see practically everything that is in the game's active scene, from cameras to characters to rocks in the environment. Everything here is classified as a game object. When we select a game object as the instructions request, the inspector window displays all of the publicly accessible components and properties specific to that selected game object. So as we change the max run speed from 6 to 13, entering play mode, we'll see that the character moves much faster than before. Or, if we increase the jump speed, our character can reach new heights. Modifying these properties will directly impact the game object when it enters play mode. We've explored the hierarchy window, the inspector window. Now let's get an understanding of the project window. Here we will find all of the files and assets available for us within the project. Like 3D models, scripts, audio clips, etc. For game objects, like the missing platform, all we need to do is click and drag from the project window into the hierarchy or directly into the scene view. Once we add an asset into the scene, we'll have to adjust the scene's camera so we can properly place each game object into the right position. 
To rotate the scene view, we can right click or option click on Mac and move the mouse. And using the scroll wheel, we can zoom in and out. With our object selected, we'll see three different colored arrows. Selecting and holding each arrow, we can drag the object in the X, Y, or Z direction until it has our wanted placement. Pressing F while a game object is selected in the hierarchy will focus the camera on the selected game object. And as this tutorial explains, we can rotate the game object instead of moving its position by switching to the rotation option in the top left corner of the scene view. When we have the platform in the right location, we can press play again. And now we'll be able to cross the gap. Okay, so we have a growing understanding of Unity's interface, how the editor is broken up into different windows and tabs, each with their own purpose. Let's keep going and learning from the next tutorials. Within the LEGO Microgame project, we have the ability to use pre-made LEGO brick assets found in the project window called behavioral bricks. Each behavioral brick provides special functionality to whatever it is connected to. For this tutorial, we'll grab the elevator brick from the project tab and drag it onto the elevator on the scene view. But this isn't the only thing we need to do for the brick to function as we intended. Exclusive to the LEGO Microgame are the LEGO Tools options in the scene view. When the brick building mode is enabled, LEGO bricks snap together just like they do in real life. And when disabled, the LEGO bricks move around just like the platform did in the previous tutorial. That's typically how all assets are moved outside of this microgame. Additionally, we have the option to select connected LEGO bricks or each piece individually. Pressing play, we'll see that the platform now constantly moves up and down, and we can complete the game. But something really cool about behavioral bricks is that we can actually combine them. In addition to the elevator brick that we currently have connected, we'll drag the touch trigger behavioral brick and add it to the opposite side of the elevator. Now, the elevator will only rise when our character steps onto the platform. In this next tutorial, we'll take our first step in learning some of the fundamentals that help make a game accessible and fun. Proper instructions, winning, and losing. Selecting the win behavioral brick, we'll notice that the connected brick above it is the touch brick. So all a player needs to do is get to this point to win. But then we disregard the floating green collectibles. Let's remove the connected touch brick by pressing delete or command delete on Mac and add a pickup brick. Selecting the win brick, we'll see that we can customize the text instructions displayed in the top right corner of the game when in play mode. For our game, we want to make it clear that the player needs to collect all 13 of the collectible green bricks to win, so let's modify the text to get that point across. We can test this now by running through the game and getting each pickup. And to give the player their first sense of challenge, we can also add a way to lose. Selecting the lose brick and connecting it with a timer brick, we'll set a countdown until the lose brick is activated and it's game over for the player. That is, unless they are able to finish the level before the timer runs out. But maybe we want an even tougher challenge, some type of obstacle, or an enemy. The micro game has us covered. Let's select and drag the Gato asset from the project window onto the platform and into the scene view. Simply adding this won't do much, so let's also connect the shoot behavioral brick. And entering play mode, we'll see that the character will now fire deadly bricks, but quite slowly and inaccurately. To fix these issues, we have the look at behavioral brick, which will turn our Gato character to face its target. And it just so happens that the target is our character. Something special about this brick is that it has to be rotated in a particular direction, we need the eye on the brick to face forward, so that it rotates Gato correctly. But having it look at our character still wouldn't be enough. We'll also need to modify the velocity and the accuracy of the shoot behavioral brick. Testing in play mode, I think we found a sweet spot, where the character isn't annihilated immediately after entering play mode, but Gato still poses a threat to the player. Awesome! 
We're just about finished for today, but this last tutorial we'll cover showcases some of the fun creativity we can have with the LEGO Micro game. Let's learn to blow stuff up. Connecting the explode brick to the fence, we'll set up a trigger to cause the fence to explode. We'll add the altar that's found in the stone structures directory in the project window, followed by the touch trigger behavioral brick. And we'll set the target of the touch trigger to specific actions. We'll keep the action size to one, and select the Explode action from the menu. Entering play mode and running over to our trigger, and voila! The fence explodes! You did it! You've made it through the primary tutorials of Unity's LEGO Micro Game. But this is just the start of the fun that can be had with the LEGO Micro Game, and just the start of your game development journeys. Awesome job today! In the next video, we'll take a closer look at the 21 LEGO behavioral bricks. And in the future, we'll harness our creative energy to build our own custom games and mods and share them with the Unity and LEGO communities. If you did like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.